A lot of wild boar trim, so we've got some domestic pork to make some incredible meatballs. And we're going to cook them, braise them up, and stuff them in this amazing fresh loaf of bread right here and make the biggest, baddest meatball sub you've ever seen, let alone stacked up with Stonehouse marinara, Hunt Chef seasoning, and wild game. Hang on, because it gets even better. We're prepping our wild black bear. Of course it's wild, what the hell am I saying? Our wild black bear, um, Asabuco. Look at that full shank right there. Now you imagine this 300 pound boy coming through the woods, just going. This is a front leg, and we got two more here. And a mirepoix, the California red wine, pepper flake. We got some turkey broth we're gonna use the braising with. So we're gonna prep these guys tonight. They'll be ready to finish up for the Friday Live. But tonight, we're throwing down on some wild game meatball sub, gigantic style. So, Mike, you ready? I'm ready, Chef. Here we go. Black Bear. Also, Buco. And wild game gigantic meat nope not ball ball sub done ready to go live so even though we're in southwest pa a little bit of kentucky we're ready to go mike you got a three two one do you press record on the big camera hey we're rolling we're live on the Hunt Chef set tonight. Farmington, PA, 15437. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mountaintop Outdoors YouTube channel. Incoming, the man behind Mountaintop, my man. man Jay. We've got Wild Game Meatballs, Black Bear, Asabuco, we're getting teed up. And you know, we couldn't pull this off tonight without the sexiest guest, guest chef on planet Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Guess My man, that. Mr. Derek Bullish, coming in. He's got a copper mug. Debo. Copper mug. In the house. In the house tonight. Jay. How you doing today? Did you kill a turkey yet? No. I'm horrible. I watched one die last week, so that's about as close as I got. Can't get one to gobble. It's, it's like, a, it's embarrassing. Did I tell you my 11-year-old daughter killed one? Can you tell me one more time? My 11-year-old daughter killed one. Thank you, sir. And my son has had two close calls. Third time's going to be the charm for number one son. But I feel it coming. Listen, I, with, I think in my best, heart, the best week's coming. In my heart, yeah. you're going to murder at least six turkeys in the next nine days. I'm thinking like three. I'm thinking between me and the guys. No, you're, 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 three, you're, four, you're going to get it done. In the next four days, we're just going to slap them uh, because this, we got a warm front coming. A warm front is finally on the way. I see 80 degrees on the 10 day. Yeah, it's crazy. And, oh, and my. It snowed yesterday. I actually went to pick morels for tonight, and they were. It snowed the last four days. They were just a pile of mush in the patch. So I figured let them seed for next year. Yeah. Um, unless they decide to come up again and. Um, gift us with their presence. Yes, please. Here in a couple more weeks. Other than that, guys, uh, across the country, all the turkey seasons are open. I see all the way up in Maine, they're smashing birds now. Uh, nice. Go get them. Hopefully, you guys had better uh, weather and better luck than we've had here in southwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, the season's been open two weeks. We can't hunt on Sundays. <clears throat> so uh, we're at 12 days in hunting. Out of those 12 days of hunting, it has rained nine. Uh, wonderful. Oh, brutal. May showers bring June. Uh, hopefully, beers. wait, 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 wait. May snow showers bring June. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't, I don't think there is tuned. such a saying. Yeah. You know, we might have to coin one, Mike. Yeah, we might. May snow showers bring mm. dead turkeys a week after they're gone. I don't know, but I know it'll make the food plots nice. <laughs> I mean, that's all I know. Gives it longer time for that seed to germinate in the ground. And as soon as uh, you know the frost seed had longer to germinate this year. We got a little something special tonight, guys. The first night we're on YouTube Live. Um, so for, for out of the first 25 people that tune into our Mountain Top Outdoors channel, we'll give away five T-shirts. What? Right off the bat. Uh, we got to get over Well, I'll get the next five. Check. Bam. Bam. So out of everybody that tunes into our YouTube channel tonight, <clears throat> Mountain Top Outdoors, um, you guys will be able to replay every episode now on YouTube as well. Exciting. It is exciting. And we've got a lot more exciting stuff coming so tell me where what part of the bear is this so this is the shank 
and I misspoke earlier to Mountain Top YouTube. I'm sorry. I mentioned the front leg. This is actually the hind leg. Oh. But imagine that hind leg. So right here is at the elbow, and so this is basically the rear bicep um, for layman's terms um, coming down. So as that bear goes, you know this bow moves. Uh -huh. These bones, that it's kind of locked up right now, but there's a knee joint right there. And, but there's all this delicious, amazing protein. It's like, you know, caveman tomahawk kind of chop situation. But what we're going to do um, is season this guy really well. I would have liked to brine it, I think. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, we're going to see how it comes up. Because it smells really strong. And I um, cleaned this guy up as soon as I had hold my hands on it last year. It was October 29th was the date on a vacuum bag. Tied it up, and it, the, the ties are a little bit loose right now. Um, that's what happens, I guess, with the uh, with the freezing part. But we're gonna season it, we're gonna sear it really well. We're gonna take the, there's two more, we're gonna take them out of the pan, and then we're gonna add our, uh, our mirepoix, French for veggies. We got tomatoes, carrots, onion, celery, fresh garlic. We're gonna brown all that up. We're gonna put the shanks back in the pan, and then we're gonna deglaze with some California Syrah. Mm. And we've got some turkey broth, wild turkey broth that we're going to um, put in there and braise these guys nice and slow um, in the oven. And then you'll see the bear shank finished dish um, this Friday coming at 8.30 live right here on Mountaintop YouTube, Hunt Chef. And uh, we might even have a couple other yeah, we have channels some, we have some more there. channels coming out here, guys. Some more uh, platforms you can catch our show on. Um, just for you guys that know here on Mountaintop YouTube channel, your, the Facebook folks have caught on great. And we thank you so much for that. We do this what days? Tuesday and Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every week. Twice a week you can cook it better, see what the guys in our other brand, Smoking Eyes up on Lake Erie, are catching. Uh, hear from Chef here and hear what hopefully I'm killing at the time. Serve turkey season's a fail. Um, but we're working on it. We're working on it. As I smile. And he's smiling bigger. Jeremiah, what'd you bring Chef and I the other day to the shop? Uh, I made a meatloaf this week. You did. Oh man. Dude. This guy's teaching me. So good. This guy's teaching me. Let me so tell you. So good. And your buddy over here that talked me about the croutons the other night. What was his name? Sean. Sean. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for that tip, my man. He's he's still not on the book face yet. Oh. Wow. At least he hasn't sent me a friend request yet. We'll send him a, uh, a YouTube Come on, Ackman. YouTube file. We'll send him a YouTube file. And then in addition to this amazing black bear deliciousness right here in front of us, we're going to make some wild game meatballs. We have um, the venison. We have Audad, my man Jay, New Mexico, right? New Mexico, public land, drew the tag. Um, it was just a, a Guadalupe mountain range. Just really, really cool hunt. Nine days. Awesome hunt. Yeah. Awesome experience. So venison, Audad, and I'm fresh out of wild boar trim. Anybody wants to ship me some, I'll happily take it. But we got some domestic pork trim from my shop, Stonehouse Butcher and Provisions. You can find us online at shbutcher.com. Lots going on there. But we're going to make some great meatballs. Derek's going to start um, grinding these guys up in a little bit. So we're going to get a first grind pass on the meat. We're going to get it in the bowl. We're going to add the seasonings, um, the, uh, the garlic, the onion. Grind it again. And then we're going to get back in the bowl. Add some fresh breadcrumbs out of the middle of this. You gotta love the smell of fresh bread. Out of the middle of this giant loaf. So we're basically gonna cut the top off, hollow this guy out, take that middle section, and grate it on the uh, on the box grater. Oh, we're gonna get some cheese. I'm gonna get that as soon as you start grinding. Um, mix that all up in a bowl. Then we're gonna uh, roll up some meatballs, brown them, add, of course, we're gonna season them with Stonehouse, eat what you kill, hunt chef. Eat what you kill, wild game, grill rub, speed beef rub, and uh, some Stonehouse marinara, mm -hmm. Stonehouse home base, mm -hmm. stonehouseinn.com, and mix those up, roll them up, brown them in some extra virgin olive oil, add the, the uh, marinara to let them finish a little bit, then we're going to scoop them out, put them in this uh, inside of this loaf of bread, cheese the bejesus out of the top of it, put it in the oven, brown it up, and see if we can pull it all off by 9.30. I'm really excited here because the flavor I think that's going to come out of this oh, is going to be something else. And it's Nothing like, but wild, wild, except for the pork. Well, and, and people 
have a tough time eating odd dad. It's a desert animal. Yeah. It doesn't have a lot to eat. Um, People have a tough time eating black bear. And that's where I was going next. I, I never had good black bear until I met Hunt Chef. It was the first time we, he made a good event. black bear. I think you can check it out on LEM site, right? The smoked black bear. Um, black bear ham. LEMproducts.com. Black bear ham. That's on their YouTube channel. Check it out. There you go. He smoked a black bear ham for LEM on their YouTube channel. It was the best black bear I've ever had. Gave me a piece to take to uh, on hunting camp this year. I took it out to Illinois. Got it up in camp. Guys loved it. Speaking of which, get those tags in, people. Iowa's open. Uh, you got to remind me. I want Iowa. I want in Iowa this year. Right now. Is Wyoming done? Wyoming is done. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Maybe I'll get a governor's tag with the Holy Pursuit Dream Foundation draw. Speaking of which, great point, Chef. Guys, get out there and uh, check out Holy Pursuit Dream Foundation. Those guys do so much for terminally ill kids. Get them on a hunt of a lifetime. And uh, they're just great people. They have a um, ticket going off right now for a governor's tag. How many tickets are sold? 300. You see, you have a 1 in 300 chance, which is the closest you'll probably ever get to governor's tag, unless you have a super deep pocket. How about it? That's the closest I'll ever get to governor's tag. Um, that, mule deer, that mule deer tag usually goes for about 200 grand, um, and you'll be able to get one for Woo! Yeah, so. 100 bucks. Plus, if you don't get the uh, the governor's tag, you got a shot at like five, eight guns, guns something like that. Guns. Nice guns. And you're helping a good organization that's helping give back to kids, and that's most important to Well, I mean, shot. Charlotte and Hannah run an awesome operation. They do. But Charlotte's dad. Yeah, I mean. Take. Yeah. Main man, I think he Kevin Turner, shout out to you, my friend. I know you've been um, logging on to one of these. We appreciate the support. And uh, I know they, they uh, had one of their kids uh, not in so great health this week. They're posting prayers for him, oh, prayers for that kid. And that's all I got. Can't wait all right, so here. that's okay. D, you ready to fire up that grinder yet? I'm ready. What do you need? Nothing. I was looking for a steel, but. Steel, here, right okay. here, Bob. You got one? Thank I you. got you. So, um, <clears throat> venison, all dead pork, going to kind of put it in um, an equal amount, run it through the grinder, kind of get it pre-mixed, and what's in the bowl, we'll add the, uh, the onion, the seasonings, the garlic, the hunch up, tendering seasoning, get all seasoned up, run it back again one more time, and then we're going to be ready to grate in the cheese, the bread, and get started with the uh, meatball process. Ready, Sounds set? Good. Got some gloves. I do have gloves. XL gloves. Cool. The, the big old nitrile expensive gloves. You know, I know the ones you like. <laughs> All right, so the grinder's gonna be loud, so stay with us. We're gonna try and talk over it a little bit. But right now, I'm going in the pan with some olive oil right here. Actually, a little bit more. So I usually don't saute in olive oil. If you spend much time with me, you know that. But I've got the heat pretty low and what we don't want to do is see that olive oil smoke so as soon as we get it in we're going to add get them in there these black barrel sabucos and as soon as that meat especially those big chunks of meat Leafy 
parts are great. Bear and floral. So we're going to keep them going with the uh, black bear the whole way through the dish. And once these are brown, we pull, we pull them out and let the veggies kind of finish up before we add the tomato. You can see things are getting rough in the coronavirus land because the onion is starting to sprout in the middle. That's okay. So we're going to knock that off. Take that stem off the end. Give it a good peel. Actually, one more layer. Anybody else? Grinder, it up. Do what? This LEM grinder eats it up. The LEM grinder eating it up. Hey, speaking of LEM, you guys can log on to LEMproducts.com and buy anything you want, put it in your shopping cart, and at checkout, put in HC Punch Chef 15 and save 50% off your order. I don't make a dime, but you can save 15% every single time in the rest of your life because that code never ever expires on the LEM Products website. So, and now we've got the onion. My God, he's almost through it all. And he's through it all. We might have to grease that thing up a little bit, Mike. I put a little oil on it before we started. Did you? Yep. All right, good job. Mike's always on it. I mean, dude thinks like three steps ahead of me all the time. I'm like, maybe I should do this. He's like, yeah, it's already, it's ready. Anyhow, so let's see on the bottom side of this black bear shank. Oh yeah, she brought it up nice. The olive oil is not smoking. What you see there is steam coming off the veggies and a little bit of the uh, natural juices, AKA blood, whatnot, coming off the shank. But what we want to do, and it's gonna take a minute, is brown these guys all the way around. That looks especially nice. Look at those caramelized chunks of, of uh, carnivore right there. Ooh, the steam, ooh. Ooh, the cinematic effect of the steam. I love it. So going back in, brown them all the way around, because that sear, and I say this all the time whenever um, I'm cooking and sharing with you guys. Every single step of every single process that I do, I'm trying to build layers of flavor. So if it starts here with the natural flavor of the meat, then it goes to the seasoning, then it goes to the browning, then it goes to the veggies, then it goes to whatever else, red wine, pepper flake, olive oil, turkey broth, um, whatever you're gonna add to that, and you want to bring that together in a symphony of wild game deliciousness. Symphony. The symphony, where I play the cello, or bass, whatever the hell that thing is. All right, a wild game deliciousness, and that's what's working on happening right here. All right, so Derek has the, uh, all the wild game ground up, the venison, the yaw dad, and the, uh, the domestic pork. He's got onion in there, working on garlic next. We're going to lose this tray for him here in just a second and give it a good rinse. And wipe the dry and bring it back. So we're browning, we're building flavor in the pan right now. It's going to stay with this because, so these shanks, mm -hmm. um, once we deglaze everything in this pan and we get the tomatoes um, caramelized up, deglaze everything, we're going to wrap it with plastic wrapping foil. I've got a bigger roasting pan up here. I could have done this in, but it was just a little bit too big for everything we had going on. And I wanted it tighter, so once, what we'll do is get this pan off over here. We'll come over it all with plastic wrap, then the foil, and make sure it has a good, tight seal all the way around. And then we'll put it in the oven tonight after we get the uh, mega gigantic, oh my goodness, wild game <laughs> meatball sub loaf bus express out of the oven. I still have to get cheese. Don't forget to get cheese. Don't forget to get cheese. Don't forget to get cheese. It's going to be a one nice flint stand. I mean, that is going to be a flint and so right there. Right. Yeah, yeah. Chef, you, you, if you could see the screen and everybody tuning in tonight, Davey Pratt is here. Jackie's hey, here. Hey, Pratt! What Heather, are you doing, fella? Come Heather, on! Heather's in here. I mean, there's so many folks. Sheena, Sheena uh, Faisenbaker's in the house. 
I mean, there's so many folks tuning in. And I That's awesome. Awesome. awesome Thank you all so much for being here. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're just really getting started with this thing. And we got two dishes working tonight. This one's going to finish up um, this coming Friday. So if you like what you see with the black bear, also buco, the shanks tonight. Wrong cheese. It's a real hard one. Kind of looks like a way. I love it. Um, you, then you're going to want to be sure to tune in this coming Friday when we finish this dish because these meltingly tender um, black bear shanks, these also buco, we're going to finish them up. I'm not sure if we're going to do risotto, um, polenta, pasta, stew. I don't know. But right now we're just getting them seared. We're getting everything super flavorful. We're going to braise them until they're tender and then we have three, four days to figure out what we're going to do. That's the one right there, my man right. Jay. Yep. So, to uh, talk about the D. Feel how dry that is. Don't smell it. Feel how dry that is. And I'll smell that pecorino. Does that make you smile? Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. So, um, pecorino romano and Italian uh, sheep's milk cheese. Uh, pretty much uh, very similar and a great substitute for Parmesan Reggiano. But super dry, super nutty, super delicious. And that's what we're going to top off our wild game meatball sub tonight with. Our gigantic wild game meatball sub. So, you can see... The big chunks of the Canadian carnivore. So you have to use. So my my tagline on the Canadian carnivore hunt chef seasoning is um, bold grilled seasoning, and that is exactly the bold part. What we needed for this black these black bear shanks here tonight. Getting good color all the way around on them. So you got um, onion, garlic. You ready to go in with the uh, you want in with some oregano and, and the basil? Basil and we'll grind it again. Let's give it some hunt chef and oh, yeah, tendering yeah. wild game speed reef rub. I can't forget that. We're, this one's full. Speaking of full, so you know I sell seasonings, right? So hunt chef, um, stone house. Can you, you want to see how full? Look, here's what you can expect, okay? I don't sell you half full jar. Not at any time. And ten ring is so versatile. Don't be shy. We don't be shy. We got a lot of meat in that bowl, and we want no bland meatballs. So that's a good start right there. And those, and then you can be ready to grind again here in a second, right, D? Right. Okay. So carnivore got on the back shelf. We're just about ready to. So. Be patient, give yourself some time with the uh, with these bigger cuts like these black bear osabuco. Now if you had a pan full of venison shanks, moose shanks, elk shanks, caribou shanks, pronghorn shanks, oddad shanks. What oh, would you see? Wait, wait, let's see if we can do that again. Is, is there a steam coming off of the tongue? Oh, look at that. That is so cool. <laughs> All right. So, you know, I, I haven't stirred the veggies yet because I want them to caramelize. I want them to crisp up and build lots and lots of flavor. So now, but I can see the way that I can hear it and I can see it. So the pan, the heat is coming back up because it went down when we added the shanks and the veggies. But now that heat's starting to catch up because it has seared off the moisture of the shanks and the veggies. So what we're going to do is give the veggies a stir as we turn the shanks. And that will cool that pan back down and not burn our olive oil. So steam is good, smoke is bad when you're working with olive oil as a saute, well, any fat as a saute ingredient. But right now, I mean, Mike, who doesn't want to see that delicious, tender, and over a bed of, um, oh, I don't know, morel risotto, Jay? Think you find us some morels between now and then? I think we make it happen. All right, that would be awesome. Maybe morel and leek ramp, melted ramp, and leek risotto would be the perfect bed for this uh, fall harvest Pennsylvania black bear. Hey, speaking of fall harvest Pennsylvania black bear, 
Have you seen Mike Squires on it anywhere? He's in there. Is he? Yeah. Hey, Crazy Cowboy, this is your bear, son. So, great buddy of mine, uh, hunter, trapper, world champion, rant sword and roping cowboy. He's got the belt buckle to prove, by the way. Um, harvested his first ever black bear this past fall after, I think, 23 or 4 years of hunting black bear in PA. And he, of course, kept the, uh, the hide and the skull and everything in the mouth, but he gave the meat to me. Run it. Well, again. Come on, let's go. Here we go, round two on the Wild Game Meatballs. Oh, yeah. Nothing to it. That only had time to heat it up. So we're grinding fresh onion, fresh garlic, and the uh, venison, the raw dog, and that domestic pork trim. Pennsylvania, and one of the things I'm most proud of 
um, is everything that is produced in this state. You know, currently, I'm not real proud of uh, modern, my only politics out of this tonight. But, let's hang it. got there, Chef. I have America's first real beer, America's oldest brewery, Yingling Lager, in the house. And I thought about cooking with it, but I think I'm just going to drink it. They also got that their take on uh, Nick Alter now. Uh, the, the flight in your fridge. Yeah, I, I have a bunch of Michel or Michel. Oh my God! I just say that. Oh bad. Well, that flight. Um, if you if you have seen, uh, have enjoyed, or um, yeah, appreciated the calorie, the low Mick calorie Ultra content person. of Mick Ultra, Yingling Flight is for you. So anyhow, one more sip, and what we're gonna do here now is start making. The uh, log and meatball. We're gonna give Derek a tray. Put those guys on, and as soon as I get, oh, we need the bread in there and the cheese. So this giant loaf of fresh bread. I wish you guys could smell it. If you're a bread person, even if you're not a bread person, this is for you. And it is going to make the perfect vessel for these giant uh, wild game meatballs and make, I mean, Mike, look, look at that as a vessel. That's a lot of meat, but I think we're going to get most of it in here, and I'm pretty excited about that. And then what we need to do is trim this top off, because Derek is going to grate it slash tear it into the, uh, the body of the meatballs to hold them together between the egg and a little bit of fat that's in the meat itself, especially the pork. Okay, we got great color here. Look here, we've got some incredible flavor going on. The tomatoes are starting to brown up, the veggies are browning great. You wanna talk about building layers of flavor, this is where it starts. Controlled heat, controlled temperature, don't get crazy. We got some California Petite Syrah, courtesy of Criss Cross. We're not cooking with swill, Jay. This is it's good stuff. It is. So we're going to deglaze. So deglazing means that you add liquid to a pan that has been browning for some time. And what it does is release what the French call a fawn, not pawn, fawn from the bottom of the pan. And those are those brown, sticky little bits that are nothing but flavor on the bottom and then they hydrate them bring them into the body of what's going to be the sauce and then reduce with that to get uh, really tasty stuff developed right here so lots of veggies we're gonna get the black bear shanks back here in here in a minute so and we're in the middle of this uh, national quarantine lockdown COVID-19 situation and I can't get fresh herbs to save my life. Mm -hmm. So we got some dried stuff. We got some dried parsley. Parsley has great flavor. Doesn't smell like grass trimmings. Smells like fresh herb awesomeness. That one's empty. That one's a garlic one. Um, I'm gonna put add two bay leaves. Again, um, very floral but earthy at the same time. They're gonna add some flavor to that. And then I've got some dried thyme leaves that, if you know me, it's hard for me to braise anything that's not Asian inspired without some thyme, fresh herb thyme. And that's in there now as well. You need thyme in the meatballs, we good. Put them in, put some in there. We better give it some. Gotta get more. Cheese, fresh bread, and ah, one more pinch. Wild game meatballs. Now, I want a little bit of kick to the black bear. Um, this black bear has some gaminess to it. I won't kid you a bit. It has a very distinct aroma. So I've got some uh, red pepper flakes. We get about, mm, what do you think, Mike? Third of a tablespoon? Oh, I'd say that's a pretty much a whole tablespoon. No, my hand's not that big. But we want a little bit of heat to this dish. 
um, to cut with that gaminess. And I think that's going to be just enough. Then we've got the turkey broth that is just mild enough, but still has plenty of background. What does that say? Woo! Hey, PA Hunting, Fishing, and Trapping page. We're live there tonight. Welcome, everybody, to the Hunt Chef set. Mike and I, and along with Jay, and if we can twist his arm a little bit, Mr. Derek Bullish are going to be trapping this winter uh, for all sorts of tasty, delicious fur bears. And pretty soon, on right here on set, you're going to see us prepare some raccoon. You're going to see us prepare some red fox. And yes, you're going to see us prepare some wily coyote. So, uh, brown the shanks, season the shanks, brown the shanks, brown the, the, uh, the veggies, deglaze with the red wine, added the herbs, the bay leaf, and now we've gone back in with the, uh, the, the red wine and the chicken stock and set our black bear shanks in there. And we're going to pull these guys over the side because they're just going to hang out um, because for the rest of tonight, they're just going to sit over here until we're done. I'm going to wrap this whole thing with plastic and then foil, and then it's going to go in the oven and it's going to braise overnight while Hunt Chef sleeps until I get up at turkey o'clock in the morning to try and take number one son out to kill one and... From here on out, it is all about wild game meatballs. Coming front and center, we're going to drop that heat. Get this pan up there. Actually, we're going to, we've got some seasoning and some other stuff in there. So we're going to give it a quick wipe. Yeah, how about that? Bam! I like that. So we have our wild game meatloaf bread barge. We're going to lose this tray again. In that spatula for a moment. This is the top of the, the uh, wild game meatball barge. We're done. Now we're going to use this actually to uh, grate more cheese on top of the wild game meatballs. We'll set the. Yay. Well, a little bit smaller so we can get them cooked quick. What do you think? Otherwise, amen. But we'll just go a little bit smaller because I feel like we're. Well inside of the half hour mark, and we probably kind of need to hurry up a little bit. What do you think, Mike? Uh, we're, yeah, we got about 20 minutes left. 20 minutes. All right, so we're going to do little guys. You got the gloves? I got gloves right here. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to run the risk of extra virgin olive oil again in the pan to brown these guys. And we just got to make sure we don't get too hot too fast when they start to smoke. And we're going to double down. Four hands are better than two, somebody told me. On these wild game meatballs. Hey, Jay. Sir. Any chance you cracked that uh, large um, door behind you? Yes, sir. I can do that. So they don't have to be pretty. But I do think they have to be smaller. Little, little. Well, we want to get them. You got to get, get them brown, cooked, and in the barge and in the oven because we're going to get the barge buttered up and pre-toasted, pre-game the barge before we, uh, so we're not going to get through all these. We're going to make what we think, we'll fill the barge up and then the rest we're going to hang on to and we might even do something else with them um, this coming Friday. So we'll finish another wild game meatball, maybe meatloaf dish along with the uh, Black Bear Osabuco on Friday night. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You ever seen two beards produce so much wild game amazingness? Never. Never. Thank God you're here tonight, Dee. I told you I was going to need some help. You bailed me out. I'd have been here. here for three hours by myself. I'm always here for you. See? I think we need like eight more and we can fill that thing up. What do you think? Yeah. 8, 10, something like that. And it'll probably be just enough to cover the bottom of that pan, too. I'm pretty excited. But look at the chunks of flavor in this They'll thing. Cook quick. We got the cheese, we got the onion, the garlic, the herbs, the Hunt Chef 10 ring, wild game seasoning. You obviously can find on uh, huntchef.com and soon on mountaintopoutdoors.com. We're going to get that figured out, Jay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, Our two girl more Donna's in the house, Chef. Who? Donna. Donna? 
I thought you said Barack Obama. I was going to say, kick him out. Anyhow. <laughs> um, all right, last one. You ready? Throw it on there. Bam. So we have... Oh, you hear the sizzle? Can you hear the, the gentle sizzle? All right, so we do have the domestic pork in here, but what we don't want to do is overcook these guys, overbrown these guys in the pan. And you can see there's kind of a hole in the middle here where there's no oil. So I'm hoping that as we add the meatballs, it will, you know, the volume will push that oil up and cover the entire bottom. If not, we'll just continue to swirl and make it as good as we can. So we're gonna brown these guys all the way around and then we're gonna hit them with some Stone House marinara, knob of butter. All right, speaking of butter, you wanna butter the inside of that thing? Mm -hmm. um, give it some salt and some herbs and throw it in the oven deep. Yeah, give it a little pre-toast, a little pre-game toast. What do you need? Nothing. You've got it all, you don't need nothing. All right, so butter, cheese we're gonna need here in a minute, along with our grater, stone house marinara. We're probably gonna need that knife. I feel like that knife's gonna be important. Yeah, that ball is pretty bone and knife. It's like an earthquake, only different here in this pan. It's an earthquake, a wild game flavor. Look at that. Breading up, buttering up. There you go. The big meatball, wild game meatball barge. I've misspoken like 49 times tonight. I think I should probably finish that beer and then probably straighten right up. What do you do? That's what I think. I think so too. <laughs> Darren, how do you feel right now? Feel great? You feel great. Right. Yeah. That's the inside of that butter with some ten ring. That's your full first one. And then throw them both in the oven to pre-toast. Building layers of flavor when you pre-toast. So, Jay, do you look at the weather for tomorrow? I'm thinking about taking the boy out turkey hunting. Tomorrow looks great. Uh, the rest of the week does not. Too warm? Rain. Rain. Tomorrow, oh, beware the dog. Beware tomorrow the dog. is the only morning with 100%. No chance of rain from now until Saturday. So here we are back in the rain again. At least it's getting warmer. At least it's getting warmer is 100% correct. I'll take it all day. Hey, anybody throw any comments in over there on We are not. We have zero. Zero. On YouTube. We can get some people on YouTube. That would be great. Mom Pop Outdoors YouTube channel has seen tremendous growth um, in the last, what, three, three four months? Because yeah. Jay has been on fire with um, growing his editing skills, and the video work he's put up has been amazing. What, that, uh, the Maglite commercial we just did, 140,000 views? 168,000 views today. Sir. Wow! Congratulations, man. Thanks, sir. Awesome job. Like that. Well, it's well deserved. I mean, I don't know if anybody out there in Mountain Top Outdoors Land realizes the grind um, that this guy, Mr. Jeremiah Boydhofer, puts in. Team effort with Mr. Chef and myself. Day in, day out. Don't don't let him get modest on you. He has been um, training and educating himself like a madman. These these smell amazing. They look amazing. Come on. Smell vision. Smell vision. You know what I just noticed? What you notice? The two of you. Derek's like doing stuff that you're not even telling him to do, but he's doing it. You guys work together so long. He's like he's reading your mind, Jeff. So, how long we work together? On and off. Not solid. Um, well, I'm 35 and 18, so, yeah. Since 2003, do the math. That's 17 years. So, um, this uh, young bearded man beside me, incredible chef, great dad, and um, awesome buddy. Dedicated cameraman at times. I was just telling Before Mike. Before I had kids. <laughs> Before I had kids. 
So I was just telling Mike earlier tonight, um, Derek was gracious enough to film for me uh, bow hunting, um, mostly unsuccessfully because if you guys know me, that's almost always my deal. But just about, think about this, from where we stand right now, there's about 600 yards that way, maybe seven. Matrix. No, no, I was in Kansas. Oh, where are we at? So behind uh, Corolla's, oh, back yeah. side of Jackson Wood. Mm -hmm. And remember, we were up there, we were two different trees and climbers, mm -hmm. and it was just breaking day, and that herd was coming at us. You remember that? I do. And they busted us from 75 mm -hmm. yards away. We didn't flinch. And it took, game over. Done, get down, go home. That was onyx. But the wind was in our favor, too. Wow. I mean, they were like, that was their serious backyard. True story, Mike. Uh, we were, it was in Kansas, right? Yeah. And, uh, Really nice day, a little bit of wind, the trees were rocking like this, and we're sitting in trees, and, and um, he had to tie a rope around my leg, because I kept falling asleep, the tree was rocking me to sleep, and he'd pull on the, I had pull the, on the rope if something would, uh, if something would show up. That's I have start. the picture. He's not lying a bit. So, we just added some Stonehouse marinara to our wild game meatballs, and what we want to do is just start to get that flavor in them and get that sauce reduced a little bit because that whole pile is going to go in that gigantic bread delicious barge that is uh, pre-toasting and uh, pre-game and getting some extra layers of flavor on it. So we'll scoop these guys in there once they're, uh, we'll get that sauce reduced by just a smidge and then we're going to load it. Oh, look here. You're going to talk about building layers of flavor. Ladies and gentlemen, Wow. Okay. Mike, look there. Oh, I got you. Oh, my. Oh, my. And I, I feel like we're probably going to need some more cheese, dude. So these guys are simmering away. And so what I'm trying to pull off here right now is that these meatballs are perfectly cooked. Not undercooked, not overcooked. And all we're gonna do, basically inside of this big old uh, bread barge, is keep them warm while we melt all this cheese over the top of them. And then we're gonna be able to cut into that guy and let it run like a gorgeous, delicious golden egg yolk. Egg yolk, are you kidding me? Egg yolk. Finish that beer, Seth. <laughs> I mean, I might need to just double fist it at this yeah, point. a little soft. Oh, oh my, oh my. Okay, heat off, again, just cooked is all we want them. We don't want them overcooked at all, but with the venison, the Audad, and the uh, domestic pork in there. Hey D, yeah. why don't you, since you've brought it all this far, reach behind us, there's a scoop back there in that big old Hunt Chef mug. Uh -huh. Right there, scoop them in there, and I'm gonna keep, you might wanna pause like here and there and let Jay yeah. kinda get them falling in yeah. for a picture, but I'm gonna keep grating cheese Man, until, you, nice. until you fill that thing up. And then we're gonna put all this cheese on top of it. I'm good, man. Yeah, just pause right I need one of those fancy like wheels. Yep, right there, hold on. This is making me work way too hard. Oh. So Stonehouse Marinara, I should mention right now, you can get it at shbutcher.com. 100% um, all natural, loaded with fresh basil, onion, garlic. Um, there, It is completely 100% vegetarian. And the great part about it is we make it 30 gallons at a time, all hand filled, all hand labeled. And it is, well, it's delicious. So check us out at uh, shbutcher.com for all the sauces, all the meat. Oh boy, I think that's full. Oh boy. Okay, so we need this little guy right here. We gotta get some of that sauce in there now. Let's put it on this. Ooh. That bread is so soft and fresh. It's so soft and fresh. <laughs> so it's all 
Oh, it's breaking on us, D. I think that's okay because it's going to be amazing and delicious regardless. So, what we'll do is pull these couple. They're pushing ah, out up to the top. It, it, it's, only, it's only getting more flavorful at this point. You get a shot of that, Jay? That's a bro. That's a bro. So, loads and loads and loads of pecker and Romano to get toasted and browned up. All right, dude, you do the honors. Get that sucker in the oven. Actually, we'll do the top. The fan on the oven's so quiet. I like it. Wild game meatballs, butter toasted bread bars. Nick, you can slide that in there without. Sure. Give it a whirl. So we're gonna save the rest of this. Eight minutes. To sprinkle over it. Oh, I think we're good. So what we're gonna do, we have eight minutes left. Oh my. Well, what we have the option to do here is, um, functions. There we go. Temp, 425. Ooh, we're gonna brown that thing up in no time flat with that fan. No time. No time flat. I think. There it goes. Had to think about it for a second. Oh, what a sweet shot. Do what? I don't know what I'm saying. It looks kind of cool opening up like that. I, I, I think it's gonna look amazing. Um, some picture time here. So we're Hunt Chef, or Stone House, Pecorino, <clears throat> we can lose this guy. Uh, is there a fancy little green and white ball somewhere? It would have come from Jeremiah's house. Yeah, it's right here. Here, let's put, we need a taste test here. Do you grab some of those spoons real quick? I don't know if there might be, even be a fork or two in there. We've got a couple extra meatballs that didn't make the barge. And I think these guys need to do a taste test on the meatballs prior to that big old barge of amazingness coming out of the oven. Sauce, 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 sauce. Okay. Smell of vision. Smell of vision. So real quick guys, just a reminder, uh, hashtag Mountain Top Turkey 2020 to get your entry. Oh yeah. Out. Um, Landon Prickett is winning the youth deal and the gentleman from Southern West Virginia still uh, is still holding up. Wow. That is incredible. Um, 11 and a half uh, inch beard, inch and three quarter inch spurs, big West Virginia bird. Secondly, but not least, make sure you uh, pay attention to Mountaintop social channels this week. Uh, we still have the mag light, uh, the mag light giveaway going on. Uh, Chef, these have come a long way. Look at this nice case. Man. If you guys can see the quality it's in here, and there's no junk batteries in it as well. So the, those Energizer Max come with it? They come with it, in this nice hard case. And uh, we'll be doing a, a giveaway with Mag Light like this every month. You guys will see we're going to do a, a full giveaway so we can track it 100% and then it draws the uh, winner every month. That's all I've got. That's it. That's it. So, Kill tomorrow morning. Yeah, maybe that's the morning we have this week. So we get in, we sit down, it starts to come up, you hear the bird. Mm -hmm. Are we going at them or are we just. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, I think, I think uh, that's a great point because at this point, at this point in the season and what I'm seeing day to day, I am slow rolling the bird. I'm not jamming it down his throat, calling at him hot and heavy right off the bat because I don't think they're, they're in that stage. They're roosting with hens. Um, that's what we've been seeing, shutting up by the time they hit the ground. Yeah. Um, so it's my advice, which just hasn't worked out for myself all at once. Uh, get close to that bird, get, get close to that bird as you can. This morning was very disheartening. I went to a lowland farm. Landon are super nice, thank you again for letting me hunt. Uh, when I was there last week, if you guys saw, I know Mike, the guy behind this camera was engaged when I was live. I had this bird 60 yards. Um, and I saw his head two or three times bopping up down this fence line. 
three days of rain, went back in this morning to kill him, and he wasn't there. So Surprise! That's, uh, that's been the story of my season. Um, I will tell you that we are, we are switching gears here in Pennsylvania because I believe after this Saturday, is that correct, Mike? We can hunt all day? Is that after this Saturday? Uh, the 18th. 25th. Okay. The 18th, 20th. I think it's the 18th. 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 So in Pennsylvania, two years ago, they, nice and, they were nice enough to let us hunt all day. Uh, that definitely changes your, your game plan as well. I was able to kill a bird with my bow the first year they did that in the evening. Come and get it. A pattern. Oh. I don't like whitetails when they won't gobble, and that's basically where I'm at right now. Pattern see what Mike thinks about the wild game meat bang, powder. Bang, well, bang. You guys grab one. See Excited. how we did, D. Excited. Venison, on dad, domestic pork trim, because, of course, it was all out of uh, wild pork trim. Mm. Trim roll. Mm. Not too shabby. Mm. It's really hard to make good on dad. It really is. And that is excellent, sir. Nice work. God's good. This guy here. Nice work, you go. He's on it. Let's see. Mm. You can't even tell she can't knock that out. No. Cannot? Can't knock that. Nope. <laughs> I mean, that sheep was old, Mike. The guy that helped me get the uh, the sheep out told me it was like 14 years old. Wow. You wouldn't know there was a 14 year old sheep in there. <clears throat> mm. That's it's, been frozen for over a year. It's been frozen for over a year, yeah, until the last winter. Good. Oh my goodness, look at that. I smell it. Ladies and gentlemen, get my camera. Chase, get the camera. Oh, oh. Come on, bring that board in here now. Oh, look at that. Wow. Wow. So. Oh, you hear you grab it again. You hold it. I'll try and slide it off. Right beside the tray. Holy moly, is this a piece de resistance of. <laughs> I don't even know what. That looks amazing. Oh my gosh. So, <clears throat> we've got some of the basil. I wish it was just fresh you know, super pungent Genovese, but that's what we've got. We're working here tonight in this COVID situation. More and more of the Pecker and Romano. <clears throat> These guys have come through in stellar fashion. Wow. Pen ring is in there. D. Dude, how about that? Looks good. So we've got wild game meatballs with this fresh bread, pecorino romano crust topper on it. I just wish there was a way to not hide those things along with letting you see what's in there because look at that. How's the lighting on that, Mike? That's good. That's real good. I hope the lighting is great. So we're, of course, enjoying it with a little bit of a uh, America's oldest brewery's finest here, the Yingling Lager. We're going to put it up front so everybody can see it because that is a piece of toasted perfection along with this guy that has just started to melt. Worked out pretty good. I mean, <laughs> we, you could have put you know a pound of mozzarella in there, but I think that drier, sharper, um, Pecker and Romano is really going to do this all uh, a huge favor. And remember, we buttered, herb, and salted the inside of that big bowl before that barge, that red, fresh bread barge, before we loaded it up with all these wild game meatballs. So tonight, venison, Audad, domestic pork, made the meatballs, put them through the LM grinder, seasoned them up really well, Hot Chef seasoning, Stonehouse marinade to finish them with the Pecker and Romano over here. We have our seared and ready to go in the oven and braised Black Bear Osobuco. If you tune in this Friday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, you're going to see that dish finish up and come together. Tonight, you've been watching Hunt Chef Live on set in Farmington, PA, 15437. Derek, always 
equally. You kill Hmm. How do I end it? I don't know. Me neither. Don't. Just wait. I'm still trying to hold on. Hey big camera.